<laughs> Then I'm like, ghost? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Welcome back to another episode of Circuit Bakers. And if you realize that there is a change in location, we are back in the office. Everyone close your eyes, okay? Imagine, right, if you walk into the JB Central, what's the first thing you smell? No! <laughs> roti boy is the first thing! In today's episode, we're gonna make roti boy from scratch. This is something that I have tried many times. If you want to see my first time, it looks like this. Uh, the bun didn't close, it opened up. <laughs> we hope that you enjoy this recipe and try out too. Okay, let's get started. So these are the ingredients we need for the dough. Water, yeast, milk, sugar, bread flour, unsalted butter and salt. So we'll start with the blooming process where you add the yeast and the water. So it's best to get warm water so that you can get the yeast to work. So over here we are using active dry yeast. So if you're using instant dry yeast, you actually don't have to go through this blooming process. You can just uh, straight away add it to your flour and then proceed. Elevator music. <laughs> Okay, we're done. Once it's done blooming, give it a little mix. Then we're gonna add in our milk and sugar. So make sure that your milk is not straight up from the fridge because cold milk tends to kill the yeast. If you have really cold milk, what you can do is just pop it in the microwave for like 30 seconds. Now, for my favourite part, we're gonna grab our sieve and sieve in our bread flour so that you have no lumps and it is beautiful. Why do I have one little... Do I press it? Oh, it's wet. Okay, pretend you never see that. Okay, and then not forgetting your salt. Now we're gonna grab our spatula again, mix it in. So you reach a point where you realize that the spatula, it's not very useful anymore. And you tend to want to use your hands. Kneading it in the bowl is a bit uncomfortable, so I'm gonna take it out. Once you're done mixing everything, right, uh, we're gonna make it into a round little ball. Put it back into the bowl and now what we're going to do is called the bulk fermentation where you're going to leave it in the bowl, grab a damp cloth and then put it over. Ta-da! We're going to let it sit for 15 minutes. Elevator music cue. So we are done with the fermentation, remove the cloth. We're going to take out the dough from the bowl, sprinkle some flour on the counter. And then, remember your room temperature butter. Remember this has to be room temperature. It cannot be rock hard from the fridge. So we're gonna start kneading with the butter in it. Eee, it makes the squishy squishy sound. Okay, it might be a bit tough to knead it in. It's okay, give it some time. Patience. So my uncle taught me something. Do this. <laughs> what? <laughs> Apparently it's a way of kneading. Woo. Woo. Yeah, my shirt is dripping. Help! <laughs> oh, oh. Wow, actually this is the most tiring cooking video I've ever done eh. Make sure you work your dough. Work them! Bring them back. Work them! Then bring them back. Oh. Okay, I think we are done. So according to the internet, there's a lot of ways to like check if your dough is done. So one way is when you press your dough, it is supposed to spring back. It's spring back! Another way is pinching the dough and then stretch it. It's supposed to be able to be very very thin until you can see light through it. Oh my god, I did it! I don't want to need any more! So once you reach this state, your dough is done. So you want to knead it into a nice little round ball. And then we're going to proof it for one hour. But if you don't have arm strength like me, you can use this. I actually prepared another batch. <laughs> Here. So we got this a hand mixer from Bosch. Apparently it takes half or like one quarter of my timing to prepare the dough. It's been 10 minutes and now we're going to do the test. Press it down. It just comes up. Spider web test. This one is really legit, yeah. We're gonna let this batch proof along with ours over here. So we'll see you in an hour's time. One hour later. We're gonna remove the cloth. 
Ooh, it's so fat. If you poke your finger in the center and it doesn't come up, it is well proofed. Dun dun, dun dun, poke. Well proofed. <laughs> <laughs> So now right, we're gonna remove the dough. I'm gonna actually roll it up so that it's easier to divide. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna split this into 12 pieces. Even though it's uneven, it's fine because we'll need two very big dough that we're gonna divide into 10 smaller dough. So what I do is gonna fold it in into a round little ball. The smaller ones are what we're gonna use to put your butter in it. So we repeat the process for all of them. It's pretty boring because it's all the same. You put dough in your dough, dough in, and you shake it up. <laughs> Grab your towel and then you're gonna cover it for another 15 minutes. Your timer is set for 15 minutes. Okay, so for the filling, we'll need butter and salt. We actually cut out our butter. So each block is 5 grams. We have unsalted butter here. So what we are gonna do is add some salt. If you have salted butter, go ahead. We want a solid butter because it's easier to wrap. So do not leave it out. Just pop it in your fridge after you're done with this. Remember, we have an extra batch. And then look at the producers. They are currently trying it. Wow. Okay, hey, let it. Don't press so hard. <laughs> Fall inwards. I know how to do. I also know how to do. Then why you piak so hard? You don't have to piak it already. Just put it into a small ball and then roll to how liao. Yeah, she's a very nice, yeah. Her, her one getting rounder already. Look at Mary competitive. I faster. Okay, go wash your hand, go wash your hand. Okay. Eh, why this one got dent one? Because you can't press ah. <laughs> I never. All right, the producer has done their rolls here. I'm gonna cover theirs and continue with mine. So for the butter, right, we're gonna use the small one to wrap it. Press it in the center. Spread the dough apart, grab your butter, and then put it in. You want to quickly wrap it and make sure that the butter is not melted. Now we're going to grab the bigger dough and wrap the smaller one into the bigger one. So same thing, press it out, plop the butter downwards. And you see the creases below, right? Put the creases face down and then fold it in. Pinch it and then roll it. The dough should not open up. If it opens up, your butter is all going to flow out and then you're just going to have an open bread. If you flip it over, there should not be any hole. So just place it on your baking tray. As you put it in the oven, right, your bread will expand. So don't put it too near each other. Ta-da! So now we are done and then we're going to cover it and let it proof for 30 more minutes. So next up, we're going to make the coffee topping. And these are the ingredients we need. Instant coffee, warm water, sugar, butter, all-purpose flour, and an egg. So first up, we're going to mix the warm water and the coffee powder. Make sure that your coffee is dissolved so that you don't get lumps in your mixture later. Grab your room temperature butter. Plop. Plop. Add in your sugar. You want to use room temperature butter because if you use hard rock butter, right, it's not going to mix well with the sugar. And then we're going to whisk it until it's fluffy. Next up, we're going to add in the egg. Oh my god, do you think I can separate the yolk and the white with this small little container? Oh, I'm amazing eh. Bloop. Whisk it in. Then, the egg white. Yeah. Huh? Actually, you don't need to do that lah. I decided to do it just for fun. Ha. Okay, once it is done, we are going to add in the coffee mixture. Okay, then just mix. Next is the last step and it is to sieve in our all-purpose flour. Okay, the reason why we are using all-purpose flour is because we want a crunchy top. Mix it in. Okay, if you don't want to whisk your topping in like this, you can always use a stand mixer to mix it in. Yeah, and it's much faster definitely. Pass. We are done. Doesn't it look good? So we're going to transfer this into either a plastic bag, or a ziplock bag, or a piping bag, whatever bag you have at home. It'll be good if you have time to pop it in the fridge for a while because when it's slightly firmer, it's easier to pipe on top of the bread. So I'm going to pop this into the fridge for 5 to 10 minutes. Before we pipe our coffee topping on top of bread, we're going to preheat the oven at 180 degrees Celsius. Let's press on. Alright, yep, 40 hot air is what we are looking for. 
the temperature 180 and then press start. Good. So if you can see this line right, it's actually the preheat line. Once it's done preheating, it will fill up the line with a red colour. So I've taken out the coffee topping from the fridge. It's firmer and it's easier to pipe. So I'm gonna firstly remove this. Grab your scissors and then you're gonna cut the tip. Don't cut too much because you're gonna pipe too fat. That's not what you want. Oh shit, I think I, put, I cut too much. So right, you have to only cover 3 quarters of the bun If not, you're going to waste the coffee mixture So I'm done with my set but the Bosch oven is big enough So the producers ones are also going in together So we're going to pipe theirs and then put them into the oven for 18 minutes Is that allowed? <laughs> Oi, then how to put? Oi, cannot put! 18 minutes Okay, it has beeped and we're gonna take it out of the oven. Ooh! <laughs> wow, it's so evenly cooked! Even though there's so many buns inside. Okay, we're gonna let it rest for like 5 to 10 minutes before eating because we want the top to crisp up and you don't want to burn our tongue. Lah. The producers are gonna try it before I try it because it's actually my recipe. So I, I'm actually very scared and hope I pray, I pray, I pray it tastes good. As you can see, it looks exactly like a coffee bun. By the way, this is from. Uh, Mine also. This, yeah, okay, shut up. <laughs> so, if you all didn't know, this are actually called uh, Mexican coffee buns. So, uh, very nice crust, very soft bottom. How you like it? Well, to start off, I think that mine are better looking than Mavericks. No. They just look very nice and brown and crusty. And I feel like if I hold the mic very close to here and. You can hear how crunchy it is, which sounds very nice. Mine also same sound. Okay, taste this. Mmm! The first thing I taste is the butter. Right? The first thing I taste is the bread. <laughs> what are your bread here? Like? <laughs> butter, right? You can taste the salt that we put inside, which has a very nice contrast to the sweeter bread outside. Also, the crust is very tasty, but I think the coffee flavor is a bit too intense for my liking. If you become like a coffee lover, I would like it to be a bit sweeter. But yeah, it tastes good. I think the bread is like super fluffy, which I'm very impressed with. Because I honestly didn't think we would be able to make bread so nicely. Especially when we kept punching it and like flattening <laughs> it and stuff, right? I thought it was going to be like no air left inside. Now, all of you have to comment down below and tell us whether you think my Roti Boy or Maverick's Roti Boy is nicer. <laughs> wow, I should both not bad. I think I lost. Your mind got the crust. Yeah, Maverick one got But mine is bigger and rounder. No, but you go for the crust. So it's my turn to try it. Here, 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 here. Okay, okay, enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I'm gonna try mine now. Mmm, the salty butter is damn nice. Mmm, mmm, mmm. The review is exactly like what y'all say. Oh. I think this recipe is like good for everyone because it's not too sweet, neither is it too oily. But if you prefer more butter, I will add more butter. And if you prefer the topping to be sweeter, you can add more sugar. So we can just tweak this recipe to however you like. Before we end, there are some people in the office actually. So we're gonna bring it around and ask them to guess what it is and ask them to try. Oh, you know what it is? Roti yes. Okay, okay, okay. It really smells exactly like this. It does! Mm. <laughs> the outside is very crispy, but the inside is very soft. The roti boy that I have is a bit lighter and fluffier. Like, it's more airy. Mm. This one is a bit denser. Yeah, but I'm not complaining. I also like it dense. I feel like the coffee is a little bit too bitter, so it does have a more bitter taste than the usual sweetness of the roti boy. Yeah. I actually like it that it's a bit bitter. Like, I don't like it that it's so sweet. Mm. So this is quite nice. I love it. It's damn good. I'm in front of the queue. I'm in front of the queue. <laughs> Julian! Mm. I already smell the moment I came yeah, out. Exactly. <laughs> I like the buttery part inside. That's the best part of the bun, mm. I feel. No eh, it's the crust. No! I like oh, the crust is nice eh. It's so crispy. All oh, the crispy stuff, yeah. I like everything. Yeah. Oh my god, I'll do a 24 hours eat what's big. Oh! Get out, that's yes. a lot of work for yes. me. No, no, wait, no, no, I will not have video no, comment. No, comment no, down below. Okay, the episode for our Ruti Bar has ended and I feel like it is a success. But I must say first that this is not a 
recipe that is uniquely ours because there is a lot of coffee bun or roti boy recipes out there. This is something that our team has trialed at home and then change it to make it suited to Singaporeans. I feel like you guys should try out this recipe and let us know if you like this recipe and also tag us on Instagram. Today, I also have a newfound respect for all the bakers out there. I just realized how hard baking is, the amount of precision you need, the amount of patience you need when it comes to kneading all your doughs and making all the pastries. So, mad respect. So actually, I tried this recipe at home and I used the portable oven that y'all saw in the previous episode. I had to take out the tray and then flip it so that there is an even baking. So today, we are very lucky to be able to try Bosch built-in oven and it is so big that we can put all three trays inside and not only that, it has the 4D fan function which allows even cooking for all the buns. Thank you Bosch for making this video possible. For those bakers out there looking for a big oven with multi-functions, check out Bosch. Thank you for watching this episode of Eat Book Cooks. If you like this video, don't forget to watch more over there. And remember to like, share and subscribe. Bye!